Hello everybody and welcome back to part two of the Milky Quail podcast. Um, if you've not listened to part one, make sure you go and listen to it. It is a, a cracking listen. It's a shame that you can't hear all the stories that go on in between recording these because that this, we've, we've just heard a great, <laughs> a great story. Hopefully we might hear it again later. Um, but again, we've got so much to cover and so little time to cover it. Um, let's talk about your first TT win. A childhood dream, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I was I went a little bit of a different route, I suppose, because obviously I went to Manx Grand Prix, mm-hmm. and as a local lad, that was where the route you went down. I, I'd never even dreamed to go straight to the TT. It was always like, yeah, I'll do the Manx do first, the Manx, yeah. get me up to speed, and then go to the TT. Mm. That's how it was back in the day, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the way it should be, really, as well, because again, I wasn't like the Glen when I wasn't front runner at BSB, and I know that, you know, mm-hmm. so I no way would I have been capable to run with with Brian Reed and stuff in the on the 250 it was yeah that wasn't that wasn't a viable option so it was literally to learn me trade at the Manx and then move up to the mm-hmm. TT which I did and you know I, I did the double I, I did the double at the Manx and junior and, and senior yeah uh, no junior and light, junior and lightweight. lightweight so I had um I had a 600 Honda and a and the 250 and I always remember I, Desi Collins always he Desi Desi Collins bless him he was a uh, he always wanted me to ride his 750 Kawasaki. He always wanted me to ride the senior bike. And I always wanted to ride the big bike, but I'd always come from 250s. And that, they were, that was at me, 250s are at my heart. You know, the most direct motorbike, aren't they? The 250s are beautiful things to ride and, you know, fast corner speed. And so Desi was always like, Milky, sack the, sack the 250 off. Come and ride my 750 Kawasaki. I'm like, no, Des, I'm staying with me 250. I'm staying with 250. And my sponsor at the time, Martin Bullock, he, he had a 250 and a, a CBR, so it was handy. And, so, yeah, I, I was blessed that I won, did the double and that. So that was it then. And then, and in them days, once you'd won the Max Grand Prix, that was your stepping stone then to move up to the TT. It yeah. was like a bit like football league, where you know you, you win you the championship it, yeah, and you yeah. move up to the next division, and that, that's where it should be, like saying. So, yeah, so I moved up then into the the TT then in in two thousand, and I was blessed that I, I I finished second in my first ever TT effectively. And it was like, ho, 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 get in there, you know, and, and that was in the wet rain production race um, on the blade that everyone had dissed and didn't want to ride because it was a piece of shit. And I remember Roger Harvey at the time, bless him. He was uh, he was the, the, the Honda man. Yep. And uh, the new blade had come out and uh, like everyone had dissed it and said it was a piece of shit. And I, I did like 120 mile an hour on it then. And it was like- What year was this? 2000. 2000, yeah. And it was like, oh yeah, I, I was just a young lad. I was like, yeah, because he just me, what have you done to your bike? What have you done to it? I was like, I don't know, just riding it. I loved it, honestly, I loved it. And uh, yeah, so I was confident I'd have got a good result even in the dry, you know, because mm-hmm. obviously it was wet and some people don't try in the, in the wet, do they? And, but for me, I started number one on the road. It was like a Sunday afternoon ride out for me. Yeah, just, local roads. Yeah, 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 just wet. It was, yeah, let's get on with it. And mm-hmm. I never saw anybody the whole race. And uh, that DJ won it, um, I was second and Michael Rutt was third. And So to win the Manx was amazing, was brilliant. And then the following year then to get on the podium at your first TT, that was like, you Especially know, that was, in that company. Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was good. It was really, really special. And yeah, yeah it's it magical, it was ace, it was yeah. amazing. You know, I was, and I was living the dream then because I was in the TT and that's, because when I'd won the Manx, everyone was like, oh, that's it, you'll retire now and you'll, you'll. I was like, no, what, what do you mean started. retire? That's... And what was life like for Milky then? You know, was you working? Full yeah, time oh work? yeah, was, yeah, flat know, out, yeah, flat out working it still. The to professional no, 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 no. Only once a year TT. Yeah, 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 that was it. I was, yeah. again, I had two jobs. I had car mechanic by trade and then I'd work in the pubs at night and, you know, I was working the pub seven days a week as well. I'd, I'd, well, I had three jobs effectively because I'd, I'd work in a local pub during the week, the local, the glue pot down in Castletown. I'd work there and the ship in as well. I'd worked there before. And then I'd, uh, and I'd work at the nightclub in Paramount City, actually. <laughs> yeah, the house Wait, I live in the there. glue pot's not the same thing as where the horses go to retire, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. That's not... No, that's what they're made of, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not... No, no, no. Just next door to it. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it was, again, I had to work to pay for me ties, you know, yeah. pay for, pay yeah, for, yeah. pay for it. Cause it ain't cheap, is it? That's the thing. So I had to, I knew that I had to, nothing was given to you. Admittedly, Martin used to give me the motorbikes, but I started to run them, start to tire them, fuel them, entries. Mm-hmm. I paid for all that. He literally just gave me the motorbikes and at the end of it, then he'd get the motorbikes back at the end of the year. So admittedly, you'd have to refresh the motors and stuff halfway through, but the running costs are, as everybody knows, are the, are the expensive things. And you'd get a few lads that 
you know, I was lucky that I could get a few lads in the pub. It was brilliant. You know, a few lads would throw a bit of money at Joke me. A bit of cash yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter Roots at ICR. I used to serve him pints of bitter, and he'd be like, "Oh yeah, son, get 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 a couple of couple of sets of tires and all little bits help." I used to have a bottle on the bar, and you know, and that's the island mentality, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would it would it'd be really good to to help you out that way. But um, so yeah, so it, you had to. I had to pay to I had to feed me habit effectively. Yeah, you know, like because it is a drug habit, isn't it? We all we all do it. It's all just adrenaline drug, and you you have to find the money from somewhere. And you generally always do find the money from somewhere. But I think back now, I think how does I actually afford to do that? You know, but yeah, but we never used to really budget because it didn't never it never made sense. No, how you could no, manage no. to get through a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, it's, if you wrote down at the start of the year, it was just going to cost you. you think, well, I can't no, do that. No chance. Mm -hmm. So you just but you always found a, you always found a way. Yeah, for me, you never to meeting worked to... out what you spent because you didn't yeah. want a flipping scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But but in that company, the likes of DJ Rutter, there's you right in the middle of it. Do you think oh, I could I could go on and win one of these? Oh yeah, that was always that was always the goal. Though it was always the goal. Yeah, but yeah, did that, you did you believe that you could always do it? I'd always believed that I could do it. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, that I was the that. thing. I knew that I I knew that. On, on, a, on a short <clears throat> circuit, then no, I wouldn't have got anywhere near them. Yeah, you know, but on, for the TT course, it was it's like my island. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I knew I knew it was mine. Was I knew I was fast. I knew yeah. I knew the place like the back of my hand. It was my. I, I, it was destiny. I suppose. Well, <laughs> yeah. No, I knew, I knew. I just knew. I just knew. I thought, right, yeah, I'm having this. I'm having this. And I remember there's a lad called uh, Big Al Kajin down Castletown again. I used to serve him in the pub in the glue pot, and he was a quite a good darts player. You know, but quite a, on an island level, he was good, good darts player, and he was always like, "Milks, use your brain. You know, believe in yourself, believe in yourself." And I was like, because I remember as a spotty eighteen-year-old, because as soon as I was eighteen, I had to get a second job, so I went to work behind the bar. That's how I got to work behind the bars. As soon as eighteen, and I was there, and he, he's like, uh, "What are you then?" And I was like, "Well, I says I'm, I'm going to win a TT," and he's like, <laughs> "You are." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to win a TT, even at that that age." I knew that. That's that was what I was doing, yeah. And I even see him now, and he's like, uh, <laughs> "But yeah, you know, you got to believe in yourself, haven't you? Yeah, in, in any form of sport. life, whether whatever, whether it's a job you're doing at work, you know, you've got to believe that you can do the job and and, and get on with it. And if you don't believe it, you're never going to do it, are you? So you listening, Chris? <laughs> One day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> 2002, going into that lightweight race, was that the did you did you go into every race thinking you were going to win that race, or did you go into that one going, "This has got my name on the trophy"? Uh, again, it's all it's all pretty complicated leading up to it. It was it was so complicated. Um, yeah, yeah, where do I start? Um, n to, to be quite honest, no, because it was all last minutes. Um, mm -hmm. In two thousand, so two thousand, that was brilliant, really good. It came to two thousand one, we had foot and mouth. Mm -hmm. So there was like no TT. TT was called off the first time we'd been called off since the fuel crisis in the seventies, and first time since that before the war. So it was like quite rare that you know there was no TT. It was like shit, shit. So um, I was riding for Mark Johns then on the RC forty fives. Johnsy, good lad as well, um, and he had offered me. He'd obviously seen what I'd done at the TT and said, "Look, come and ride my big bike." And I was like, "Yeah, I'd love to ride an RC forty five even though they were old then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But he had, he had done a lot of development on the engine. So it wasn't a 750 then, it was an 890. So he'd bored and stroked it out to 890. And it was, it was a rocket, it was a rocket ship. It was fast, but just heavy, big lardy thing. Bit, well, you'd ridden RC45s, you yeah. know, at night. And um, lovely bike and stuff, but uh, you can't beat technology and development. So in 2001, the, the Jix 1000 had just come out. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a real step forward in super bikes. It was really the power to weight Absolute, ratio. Yeah. And the, you know, like, like the R1 was, the, the old Jixa, Jixa moved on again, I think. You know, Quite dominant. Yeah, yeah, time, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so in 2001, it was like, right, well, I, I was doing uh, MRO mm -hmm. racing on the RC45 just to keep me up to speed mm -hmm. in case the TT did happen, even though it got called off towards the end. That was British Championship, yeah. No, no, it was next level down like MRO. Like yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It used to be MRO because again, we didn't have really have the budget to run it at British Championship, yeah, but yeah. didn't mind doing the odd MRO rounds and stuff. So, so we were doing them, um, and we were away every other weekend at Mallory and wherever we were, just riding that. And 
I bought a little Aprilia, 250 Aprilia to do the Aprilia challenge on as well. Um, which again, one make series. I, yeah. I love that one make series where it's all fair and the same. And so, uh, yeah, so we, was do, we were doing that. So it's getting plenty of riding in. And then obviously they canceled the TT. I was like, oh, so cancel the TT. I was like, no, I'm just on the, just on the brink now. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want them to cancel it. Yeah. But sure enough, they got canceled foot and mouth. And uh, <laughs> it was a funny story. I was at Thruxton uh, on the Sunday before TT would have started. And we were at Thruxton, and I was with James Courtney. Yep, was there mm -hmm. riding as well. There was quite a, you know, quite a good few fast men. It was like say next level down, so there was a few people that dip in and out of it. Took a bit of track time, and it came. To, it was the last lap, and I remember going round church, the big fast right hander, and battling with James Courtney. And I thought, I don't want. Him, I'm not. I want to beat him. I don't want him to beat me. I went around the outside and the thing just fucking got into a massive tank slapper. <laughs> I was like, oh no, no. So I sat it up and went straight through the grass at like fifth gear, you know, yeah. 150 odd, 60 mile an hour. So I'm going for the grass. And because they'd canceled the TT, my wife had booked a holiday. Cause you don't do holidays when you race motorbikes, do you? <laughs> holidays don't exist. You don't, you don't have a holiday. So because they canceled the TT, my wife had got a last minute deal to go to Greece on holiday <laughs> and I'm literally and we were flying out on the Monday and this was on the Sunday afternoon I'm going through church through the field at 160 mile an hour the things like that <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking she's going to kill me that's all it's going to be my, <laughs> my wife's going to kill me because I can just imagine me spanjaxing in, in the hospital yeah. but luckily I came back on the track and I always thought to myself that's one of the best saves of my life because the marshal was even clapping me as I was coming back on <laughs> there was grass and everything and my mate Wally Neal he was uh, he was helping me out with Spanner and I comes into the into the park for him. He's like, "Fucking hell, where have you been?" There's like grass everywhere. All the <laughs> folks. Yeah, that. that so was you didn't it. beat him. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but I just, I was just glad that I bloody uh, stayed on. Survived. Yeah, Paul, uh, Paul Young, Young, he, he was, he was the man. He, well, he was dominant on. Yeah, the, that's he, what jog my memory on the uh, G6R. Yeah, yeah, he was. He, he won British championship. Yeah, he, well, he was, he was riding in that race as well. He was, he was, he dominant. He won that race at the time. I saw him yeah. last week. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was fast, wasn't he? Living in Spain now, test oh, rider for Royal Enfield, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Good, good guy. Yeah. Hey, anyway, let's, let's fast forward a little bit. Yeah. So. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. No, 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 you're fine, mate. I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> and the listeners will be. Um, let's fast forward on. Obviously, uh, we'll skip over your big crash. Is <laughs> crashes no Palace Bird, what happened? It's a famous crash. Everybody's seen it on you. You haven't if you haven't have a look on YouTube, you'll be playing Palace Bird. Don't bother. Just, what yeah. what actually happened? Yeah, well all as you know, it, again in the end days, I that, that particular year, two thousand and three, uh, two thousand two was amazing. I won everything. So Ace, I'd won the classic TT effectively as well then the, in the the August, crest of a wave. I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm, I've made it now. That's it. Mm -hmm. I made it. I'm there. And um, I had a 15 grand tyre bill to try and pay grand. off over the winter. So I was working again during the day. I was working for Securicore on the building site, stopping the scumbags, robbing bags of cement at night. I'm trying to get you 15 grand. <laughs> yeah, 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 trying to, try to get them safe. <laughs> but yeah, no, and uh, at Marks and Spencer's then, at the weekends, I'd work at Marks and Spencer's as a security guard, people robbing shoes. Really? Yeah, oh, mate. And, and I thought you said the Alabama State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. There's always Did you say anyway, stealing no. knickers? Yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, it's, the, it was amazing. The security guard job was ace because oh, I was on, they had the cameras obviously going around, but I was on the shop floor. So I'm literally the one that's, I'm the visible security. Yeah. The, the, secu the CCTV is the invisible. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking around. So I'm supposed to be the deterrent people thing. So the next thing is someone will come up to me and say, yeah, I think you better go into the changing rooms. So I'm like, all right, okay, you go in there and there's a pair of shitty knickers on the floor. <laughs> someone sh spoiled themselves and just got a pair of knickers, <laughs> stuck them on and just left the shitty ones in there. Get out. Oh no, I'm not kidding you, honestly, every day, every day. Really? Oh yeah. All the time. It's like, oh, no, not another pair. Was it the same person? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's had an issue. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's um, yeah, so stuff like that. And then uh, Mark Suspense as well, they display Probably it's going to, probably going to sue me now, but Marks and Spencer's display both pairs of shoes. Like you own any other shoe shop, there's only one shoe, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas Marks and Spencer's have a pair on yep. display. So I'd literally be walking around and I see a tatty old pair of trainers on the fucking stand. I was like, <laughs> oh no, someone's robbed another. Someone's robbed another pair of shoes. <laughs> They'd literally go in, take the shoes off, 
try them on, leave their old ones back on and walk out of the show. Oh, great the shopping door. in the island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. so, yeah. Is that yeah. how you met your wife? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't the one leaving yeah. the, the knickers, was she? Sorry, yeah. sorry. But yeah, no, I mean, that's the, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, even, even though I'd, that's, that was the pivotal thing because in, 2002 I thought right that's it I've, I've broke into the big time now I'm going to get end up getting paid to ride a motorbike rather than having to pay for to ride a motorbike and um, nothing was happening I didn't have a helmet deal I didn't have a bike deal there was nothing happening and I thought after you'd won a TT yeah yeah after I'd be, be, but that's again why myself and Paul worked really hard with the TT try and make it more professional and more yeah. so that you know, the way I always described it was it was the only circus in town where the clowns have to pay to entertain the crowd yeah where it should be the other way around, you know what I mean? So we've, we've worked really hard now, and that's why I'm so happy with the way the TT's gone now, that the fact that the lads are getting paid for for doing, for doing sticking the neck on the line, and, yeah. and, and and that's the way it should be, you know what I mean? And it, in you, my day, it wasn't. You've swerved a little bit. How did you crash it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so yeah, so that was that. So, and then that in, in 2003, um, basically, I didn't have a ride, and then Archie moved then to go to Taz. Yep. So then CD, his Archie sponsor, I obviously didn't have a rider, so he approached me and says, look, do you fancy riding my bike? So getting back to the end of 2002, I got a bit dismayed with it, with it all, because even though I'd got there, I'd spent 10 years working really hard to get there, I got there and I was still having to pay all my thing, and I just thought, Next to motorbikes, all I ever wanted in life was a family. That's all mm. I ever wanted. I'm a pretty, pretty simple man. Motorbikes or fam- you know, and a family, that's all I wanted. I don't, I'm not bothered with money, financial things and stuff like that. Do, that doesn't interest me at all. You know, it's nice, but it doesn't make, like, make you happy in yeah. life, does it? So yeah. it was like, like, that's all I wanted was a family. So I said to the missus, I says, right, I says, you come off the Smarties and we'll see what happens, you know, you know. <laughs> And she, thinking it would take two, three years. Fuck me. Three months, three weeks later, that was it. I was like, look what they've got this. I was like, <laughs> so that was it. The decision was made then that I was going to retire. Right. And that was it. Honestly, 2003 was going to be <clears> last year where they won, lost, drawn, everything. But even if bloody Suzuki had come to a, with a multi million pound contract, I'd have gone, sorry, mate, thanks. I'm walking away. So would that, you? Yeah, yeah. That really? Was, yeah, that was, that was the decision was already made in 2000 and, 2003. That was it. I'd already made the. That was me last year. So I was hoping to go out in a high, but obviously <laughs> I'm having a bit of a low. But yeah, yeah so, you got fairly high. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that was it. So I always think it's hard for when riders get injured and the, physically their arm can't work, and they you know, and they have to retire because of that. But yeah. I'd already made that pivotal yeah. decision in my brain. I'd all, that was that was it. So I was I was happy with it. I was at ease with it. Whereas some lads, obviously, they struggle because they want to do it. They can't physically do it. Or, but I'd already made that mental decision. No, that's me. I'm done. I'm done. And it's effectively like not burnt out so much, but just like fuck it. Yeah, that's, I just want family. And, and I'm very old fashioned. <laughs> so it was like I'd never. I always said that I'd never race whilst I had children. I mean, like, some lads can do it. And uh, but I, for me, I couldn't. I couldn't be sat on the start line. And my son waving me goodbye, and I'm then me coming to Balagheri, going right. I need to hang this out through Balagheri. Yeah, it, it, it was just too much of a, a, a mind f- for me. So yeah, so that's we'll talk that's, about that in a, in a little while. <laughs> um, so fast forward again a little bit. So Chris Pritchard here, wannabe racer. <laughs> okay. What do you no, mean? Wanna, what do you mean wanna wanna, be? Wanna be racer. I used to race. I've you, done you, a bit of racing. Not, well, yeah, but I mean wanna be a real racer. Um, I'm not taking the Mickey out of you, mate. Uh, so Chris is here, is at the TT, he's a newcomer. Just kind of let the listeners know the kind of things you would talk these boys through when they first arrive at the TT course. Well, that's, that's again, that's a, a, a quite a common thing. That, I have my notebook out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, again, now, to, 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 to even to get into the position to be coming as a newcomer to the TT, people often say to me, oh, you're going to be busy this week with the newcomers, aren't you? And I'm like, no, the, I've been busy through the winter. Yeah. That's when you you, you have to... It's a bit like revising for an exam. You don't just freestyle it and go into it because you can't, it's it's too hard. The exam's too hard. You have to have done your homework. So mm. you have to have done your groundwork six months, eight months, 12 months in advance, like, like we did with you, with Steve here. You know, we, we're out Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning, pretty much through the winter, I'm always out in the morning, first thing on a Sunday morning because the roads are quiet. Mm-hmm. 
Milton's on the road and we can get round and we can just talk about it. And ultimately, let's say you have to have a good racing CV to start with, even to come to the TT now. We, well, that's me out then. It's, yeah, 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 effectively, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, but that's it. Oh, you know, that's, we, can't, we can't have journeymen effectively. You know, yeah, we, yeah. You need because it's the hardest, fastest race in the world. Mm -hmm. You have to be at a good standard, yeah. you know. So again, it's like applying for a job with a CV. You've got to have a good racing CV initially to say, right, yeah, I want to do it. This is what I've done. This is what I'm capable of. And they go, right, okay, well, that's short circuit, which is good, but it's completely different to road, you know, to the TT. Because again, people, some people say to me, well, you need to have done, you know, the scaries to have done a road race before you do the TT. It's completely different kettle mm -hmm. fish. It's like rugby league and rugby union. There's the same discipline, but the completely different way of playing it. And it, yeah. the TT is that the TT is so so unique. You don't need to have done another road race as long as you're a good, capable motorbike rider. Whether it's motocross, enduro, road racing, you can transgress then to the TT because you know that you've got the capability. I to forget do that. it then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The moment he said homework, I was, I was done. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not that bothered. I like riding bikes, but I don't yeah, like well, it that Yeah, well, I mean, that also, again, we're all, all motorbike, we're all the same. Like motorbike riders and like people say about motorbike riders and paperwork and we don't do paperwork, do we? You know what no, I mean, it's like, no. we don't do paperwork, we don't do homework, but, and it, the, the homework side of things, the learning of the onboard DVDs. I mean, like say now it's, it's a lot easier now. There's so much, footage mm -hmm. on the internet that you can literally learn it in your bedroom at home. You don't have to actually physically be here. In the old days, you had to come over and yeah. thing. Um, yeah, well, Jimmy Moore was one of my most impressive newcomers. Jimmy Moore, he had AMA super stock champion, so a good capable rider. He, and again, he didn't have the ability to just flip over from America of a weekend and fly back yeah. again. So he actually had never seen the place before he, he, he arrived here. He'd literally done on boards. For the event. For the event, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he had literally just on boards, on boards, on boards, on boards. And he came and he did 120, 123 mile an hour on a 600 in his first year. When was that? That was, oh, 2011, something like that. I mean, heck. Yeah, which was really impressive. impressive that was yeah. super, uber, uber, uber impressive. It just went under the radar a little bit. Yeah. How fast he went on a 600 yeah. in his first year. I was like, yeah. But then obviously then um, his family came along and that again just flipped his head. Yeah. yeah he wasn't with it then but yeah it's so again the likes of this man here was super impressive mm -hmm. as a newcomer and I knew he was going to be super impressive because he, he was a class <clears throat> he's a class rider yeah. so I knew I knew he would adapt to it the same as Hickey was going to adapt to it the same as Glenn Irwin was going to adapt to it the same way as you know and Josh Brooks was going to adapt to it And but for me again for, out of all the newcomers again Josh was probably the most impressive to do 127 mile an hour he did. I think it's 127. He did, didn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was as yeah, a newcomer. Fast as newcomer. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think he did 127. And Josh had been to the Isle of Man a couple of times with a Honda corporate job yeah. that had been flown in for a weekend and flown out again. Mm -hmm. But he'd come from the other side of the world, which is a little bit of a different dynamic as well. You know, a different thing to actually come and learn and work hard at it. To because Hickey, for instance, I knew Hickey was instantly going to be fast yeah. because his dad had raced here, won here. Yeah. You know, it had been a part of his life. And so he was instantly going to be fast. So, but for, for Brooksy to go as fast as he did in his first year was sensational. And I'm sure that if Brooksy had stayed with it, he'd be giving Peter a run for his money now. Oh, well, yeah. Do you think? Yeah, oh, definitely. 100%. 100%. That's interesting. Brooksy's, I, I like Brooksy. I like his way he works. He's very intense, very full on, class rider. And like say, just that he, he went to World Superbikes, didn't he, with Sean Muir, Sean Muir then That's right, that yeah. following year then went to BMW, mm -hmm. went to World Superbikes, so he went with him. And and again, it's like anything, you've got to keep doing it just to keep your hand in, Yeah. just to keep your hand in. You have a couple of years out and everyone Very else is moving on and you're yeah. staying here. So you've got to just keep keep run, running around. So, yeah. So two questions here, just going back to the American, obviously he'd never visited the place until he got here. Mm -hmm. So how are you deciding whether he's good enough? Are you like giving him tests? Yeah, like literally just dropping him yeah, in the middle text, of a circuit text, text and saying- Text messages are always good. Do you know what I mean? In them days, it wasn't, wasn't what's happening. <laughs> text messages, semaphore. Yeah, what, but, so like, what, so like you, yeah, we're at Union say, Mills, what gear are you in? Yeah, yeah, what's, what, what's, what, what's what the problem? What's, what's around the next corner? What, you know, what's the issue I've got here coming up here? So Let, All right, let's test Steve on this. Let's see how good Steve is. Give Steve an example of that and see if he can 
tell us where he is on the on the circuit. Oh, cruel to me. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> somewhere easy, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what's the issue after Blaffridge? What's your next problem after Blaffridge? You tell me the next problem after Blaffridge. Well, for me, it was always Balakrai jump. There you go. That's exactly what I wanted. Did to pass hear. a test? Yeah, that's that's a that's a pass because you know that that's the problem. I was going to say the same. <laughs> <laughs> and right, so which side of the road should you be on, Balakrai? Left or right? Over the jump, mm -hmm. I tried everything because I'm crap at jumping, <laughs> whether it be Crosby, whether it be Balakrai and various other places. And obviously you, you're going for the low side. But for me, it didn't, fast. it didn't matter. You're going that quick. It didn't matter where I took yeah, off. Yeah. Uh, I always got crossed up or everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think the wind had a bit to do with it. It wasn't as bad as Balakrai as Crosby. I know mm -hmm. I'm sliding off a little bit, but it was just, I, I never felt comfy. It was probably half the problem. Well, again, when we first met Steve, we went down to, me and Paul went down to Brands Hatch to meet Steve in his, in his he was doing British Championship at the time. Mm -hmm. We went down and uh, obviously at that time he'd won Macau, Northwest. He was fucking on, on fire. Yep. And it was like, we've got to have this man. This man has to come to the TT, you know. And you weren't particularly that bothered, were you? Yeah. You know, the first time I spoke to him, he was like, nah, nah, it's not, I'm not, I'm not really that. This is what I'm focused on. This is what I'm into. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, well, you know, you need to come to the TT. You are, <laughs> you are the man. And, um, Obviously, that's the first time I'd really seen him. I thought I looked at him and went, "Shit, he's small," and that was my con that was my concern instantly. Was like, "Shit, he's small." Right. So, you need to have bulk and size to be able to hang on to the thing. The things are around here are so physical, Super bike, yeah. yeah, so yeah, physical. And I was thinking, "Oh yeah, six hundred to be mustard, but on the big bike, but, yeah, but yeah, it's obviously, true. yeah." But again, over the jumps and stuff, where you know, Steve's struggling again over the jumps, they just the things are so heavy and thing they just take off. And a bit of wind as well, it's pulling you off the bike as well, it just doesn't help us. And then the things unsettles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I mean, the likes of Hickey, Connor, <clears throat> Michael, big lads who can move the bike around, big leverage to get the thing to turn and come yeah. off that center axis. It's, it's it, in any other sh in short circuit racing, it's a, it's a hindrance, whereas the TT, it's a, it's a benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's what. I always think is is good because I was a bit, I was a big lad as well. So, yeah. that it, you know, it, it gave you put you on a little bit of a rather than always being kicked in the ass by your size. When you come here, you're actually an advantage. So, yeah, but yeah, get, getting back to the newcomer coming. So ultimately, again, we'd have to have him as a as a look at your CV and go right. Okay, you, you know, you're a good good start right, a good standard British Championship level. Yeah, you're good. You, you know what you're doing. You've done it enough. You've you're quite experienced. You know, you're good experience on you. We'll, we'll get you over for a weekend. So basically, we invite you over for a weekend, and, and me and Bart, you'll take you out. I'll take Bart, you'll take you out one day, and I'll get, take you out the other. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're telling you what to do, but also we're trying to check you out see, as well to see where, you, where, you, where your brain's at. Yeah. You know, and if someone comes to me and, and says, oh, yeah, you know, I want to do the TT because I want to be rich and famous and meet loads of birds, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> you're in the wrong job, yeah. mate. You're back on the plane, go on a boat. Not yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not the thing for, for that, you know. It, I love it when lads come over and say, yeah, you know, I've watched it since a dream, you know, since a kid, it's a dream of mine and, you know, and I've always wanted to dream to do it. And that's, I, I want that enthusiasm. I want yeah. the passion to, that they want to do it because it's, they want to challenge themselves to the hardest race in the world. That's what I want. So now, now you're doing this role and doing a good, great job. Obviously you and Barty, John, John Barton, kid I'll race with actually, uh, from my era, you know, we were teammates at the Baldor and a good, good kid anyway. Um, but he still does a bit of racing. I know yeah, yeah, yeah. Now and yeah, he yeah. does a uh, classic TT and, and various other bits and bobs, lightweights and so on. But, but my point being is he keeps his hand in. He knows the course, knows the circuit. Now it's quite a while now since you've yeah, ridden, yeah you've yeah, done yeah. loads of miles, obviously, mm. and, and you ride around every year. Um, do you think that's a negative or a positive? My question is, I suppose, why don't you do the classic or something to keep yourself a little bit sharper? with the changes of the course, the roughness maybe, at race pace and so on. Yeah. Or you're not allowed, won't you let you? No, <laughs> honestly, my missus, my missus said to me, when I retired, she says, I wish you'd go back racing because you're a right miserable. Because <laughs> 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 I was always like, yeah, yeah, frustrated. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and mate, I'd love to, I'd love to, but now, I mean, I'm 50 years of age almost. I'm too fat, I'm too old, I'm too slow. My reaction time's down. I, I'd only want to go and push it on, you know, I, again, because when I was right. Because you competitive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 basically, that's, yeah, no, I, that is, that's always been, my, probably my downfall, really, is the fact that I have 
being too aggressive and too that's you know I want I, I'm not a patient man I want it now I want it done now I don't mm -hmm. I don't want to wait I want yeah. it now yeah. and I think lots of motorbike races are like that and hey here, listen I in a few weeks time will be at Goodwood Revival I don't care <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't care honestly whether I'll yeah. win or I'm over yeah, it yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. but my point in saying that is the majority of people that are around me on the circuit it's, it's Moto GP. Mm, I know, I know. All retired riders, yeah, it's yeah, Moto GP, and they yeah. can't get that out of the system. Yeah, I yeah. fully understand that. Fully mm. understand. That's not being smart. I'm just. It's only a natural thing. I'm just lucky that I'm kind of over it and, mm. and not too worried about having to uh, uh, be on the box or on the podium. Yeah, Weird, yeah. isn't it? How I know, people I know. react I, different ways. I would. Uh, yeah, I say I'm. Sh you know, I just want to go. I wouldn't necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily as well. If I went out now, I wouldn't want to go and win it. I, it's not the winning. It's just going and pushing me. I, to try and get as far and as fast as yeah. yeah, trying to get around as fast as I could. That's what I want to do. I don't believe you. It was just be like, <laughs> 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 but no, yeah, and yeah, I don't get me wrong. I'd love, I'd love, love to be be out there again. And I was, I was, I was uh, that question wasn't dangling a carrot. It was purely, no, 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 purely no, no, keeping no, no. yourself up to speed. Yeah, yeah, no. I, with, I mean, with... again, I'm lucky that I always get two, three laps a year that yeah. I can whiz round and stuff. And but you know yourself, this place. I can't remember. I was speaking to in the panic yesterday and obviously this, it's been three years since we've had the Manx and yeah. stuff and, and and he hadn't done it for again I think about the last 10 years and he says oh it's my first year back from 10 years I says, you never forget it you never mm. you never forget this place because it is so intense yeah. it's not like again because you want to do it you're passionate and it's life threatening you'll learn it really quickly and again that goes to the newcomers as well yeah. like the lads pick it up really quick because you have to it's not like going to a geography, I, the way I always describe it is, at school you might go to a, the geography lesson, you're like, oh God, I hate geography. And you're like looking out the window going, oh, I wish I was out with BMX. And, yeah. Yeah, I wonder what I'm gonna do tonight. And next thing is the lesson's over. And you're like, oh, what did he say? I don't give a shit, I'm not interested in it. Whereas here, every newcomer I generally take, I, I've had others, I've had in the past where people have, haven't taken to it, but the 99% of the people that you take round are interested in it they want to be in know, they know about it they want to learn about it they want to in, you know and yeah so you, you do learn it really fast and you never forget it because they're all life in threatening corners you know you don't forget how to go for Balagari do you you don't forget how daunting that is and pop my bray hill and yeah so yeah it, it, you know a few, few few years ago not too long uh a really good rider um French Championship World Endurance, Dietrich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gillian. Uh, yeah, really, yeah, really yeah, good yeah, kid. Yeah. You know, I've, I've done 12 years with all the factory teams mm -hmm. of World Endurance and ridden against him like a good, good kid. He came, uh, ran straight on just past you and Knights going into, uh, into the field uh, mm -hmm. and ended up be straight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then just went home. Yeah. You know, does that happen very often? It's, it's a brave man to stand yeah, down and yeah, say yeah, that. No, uh, no, I mean, Gilliam. Not at ease with the course and to yeah, leave. Yeah, Gilliam, he was a um, real nice lad. Um, he was like multiple French champion, won the Mans, Bordeaux. He was a factory Suzuki rider, Hector, Neil at TAS. He supplied him with a brand new Suzuki from Suzuki France, said, look, give this man a motorbike, add him. And uh, so we're spending the winter driving around and he came over three times, I think I had him over. Yeah, three times I had him, three weekends I had him over, driving around and, and he was like, I was like, yeah, well, this is this is really fast, and you know, this is pretty much fifth, sixth gear. He's like, no, 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 it cannot be, it cannot be. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, it is, and he's like, no, no, no. So, as on, on the last trip, he started to get it a little bit, and I thought, oh yeah, he'll be all right, he'll be all right. Then he's starting to get it now. He's getting his head around it, and it's the one thing that all my newcomers say to me. You ask them all, and I've I've taught British champions, world champions, European champions all capable, very, very capable, fast riders. And they, the first thing they always say to me after the first session is go, they say, it's so fucking fast. Mm -hmm. And you say to people, this is fast. And they're used to going those sort of speeds every day of the week. And it is, you know, it's, it is just ludicrously fast. We all- To we all, explain it really, to, well, not just to the table, to the listeners, you know, my first year, um, I went to McGuinness and I said, I just, oh, I can't get me. Head. I said, Dan Sorby straight, which is like running down a tunnel with the trees mm -hmm. overhanging. I said, my vision can't keep up with the speed. It's all a blur. He said, I oh, don't worry. It'll come to you by the end of the week. Like you want. <laughs> but that's the TT course. It's just, it is, 
Uber, there's no place like, I mean, the Ulster's fast. I mean, the Ulster's has the, the higher outright lap record, but it's not as, it's just so fast for so long. That's the difference here. You are literally almost 200 mile an hour virtually everywhere. Yeah. You are literally on on it everywhere. And there's nowhere else in the world where you can flog a litre sports bike to its limits. And that's, again, what makes it so magical, isn't it? There's, yeah. you know, the back straight at Thruxton or something, you know, at, at Snetterton, you're on the, you're on in sixth gear for like, you just hit the limit and you're off it again. Whereas here, you down so we straight going, come on, I want some more yeah. out of it. What's wrong with it? Come on. So does and, that happen very often? Um, with with the, newcomers, I mean. That you get people that say no. Yeah, um, mid event, you know. Or, or, some people gel with it. Um, there's a lad, Bobby Collins. Yep. Bobby, when we went to see seeing Bobby at, at Brands Hatch, met Bobby at Brands Hatch. At that time, he'd won the he'd, he'd won the Superstock race, I think it was. Um, do it. He was doing uh, celebration wheelie. Sat on the tank wheelie, and I thought that boy knows how to ride a motorbike. And we got talking to him, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I went racing because I, I nearly got banned banned on the road and for wheeling and messing around and riding crazy on the road. I thought, perfect. He's the perfect <laughs> thing for the TT. But not that I'm not saying that you have to be mental to ride the TT, but um, I thought, yeah, he'll, he'll, it won't phase him. It won't phase him at all, but it just freaked his brain. He couldn't do it. He literally couldn't do it. It just freaked his brain. He had a bit of a, he had a bit of an off at, at the Northwest two weeks earlier and it freaked his head, just messed his head. And it, it just, it just couldn't, couldn't get it. Couldn't get it, which, Again, it's not it's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure now, but now Bobby's a little bit older. I'm sure that if he came back now, he'd be really fast. I'm sure he would. But um, yeah, it's just it's it's whatever takes you. It's a bit like Marmite, isn't it? You either love it all over, yeah. I suppose. And I love it, but I love it from a from a, a fan's point of view, not a not a rider's point of view. But yeah, that's what makes it so fantastic as well, though, because the amount of enjoyment you're getting is yeah. the amount of enjoyment that we're getting. If not, you know, we're getting more. It's yeah. just it, because people often say to me. Why do you do it? I'm sure people say to you, "Why would why would you want to do it? Why do you want to do that?" It's, you know, it's crazy. And you're like, the way I always try to explain it is, it's like, you know, when you're and you're doing the washing. Well, not that you probably do your washing, but um, <laughs> your missus probably does I've it. I've seen it been done. <laughs> yeah, 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 seen it been done. Yeah. Um, when you when you're looking, to, you, you you're doing your washing, you're sorting for your trousers, and you you put your hand in your pocket and you find a twenty pound <clears> note. But it's exactly like that. You know, you you, you pull it out and you go, oh yeah, twenty pound. I didn't know I had. Well, times that by <laughs> 100,000 is the feeling that you get when you go down Bray Hill. It's just like, oh my God, it's just, it is phenomenal. It's just, unless you've, unless you've experienced it, it's really hard to, to try and describe how, yeah. what it feels like, but it is, we, like say all motorbike races, we all, we all buy motorbikes because we like to go fast and you get it here in the bucket full. Yeah. So, you know. We'll, just quickly. Well, not quickly. We'll, we'll see me running out of time, I guess. Because, you know, we're at the Manx Grand Prix and you've got to be off of practice soon doing your stuff. Um, you're the busiest man around the paddock. You know, you obviously look after the newcomers. You're always up there setting up for the start and putting barriers up, moving brandings and boardings and various things. You're the busiest man on the planet. You're a massive asset to the to, to both events here, yeah. you know, in June and in August. Um, is that something you enjoy? You just can't stand still. I, I'll... I'm passionate about the event. I'm passionate about the TT course. I'm passionate about the Isle of Man. And I want it to be a success. That's the thing. I want it to be a success and and, and to be shown worldwide how a, an amazing event this is. Because it is, it's just, it's completely bonkers, but it's amazing. It's the best thing. And I want things to be right. And again, just same thing again. I want it done now. And I want it right. And I want it done now. And I'm impatient. And, you know, and it, that's the, the way I always try to think, well, if... I want to do it so it, and at least I know it's right or you know rather than just have someone else will do it because someone else Norman you know you ask someone to do that and it will get forgotten about won't it mm -hmm. someone else yep. so whereas if I do and do it now it's I know it's done it's, so that's I just yeah I just like things to be done right and look right and be right and stuff and yeah so well let's let's end this podcast <laughs> the right way <laughs> Steve quick fire questions right some quick fire questions <laughs> do you listen to the podcast uh, well yeah when I get time when I get time I watch a couple of them and I said no it's <laughs> fine it's, it's being fine. polite <laughs> right there's only 10 questions okay you answer mm. one or the other no or no you Ems, know ifs no buts, yeah, yeah no yeah, no yeah. you can have an er or an if or, 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 or this and that but obviously it's one or the other mm -hmm. you know we don't want any uh, descriptions of the <laughs> answers <laughs> beer or wine neither <laughs> Neither. No. Never. I do, but I, I probably drink a couple of times a year. And again, there's another question. Answer that. Beer or wine? Beer then. Right. <laughs>
But I'll elaborate on that first question. Pineapple <laughs> or never pineapple on a pizza? Never. Ooh. Crosby jump or Balakrai jump? On the TT course. Uh, Balakrai. Two stroke or four stroke? Two stroke. <sighs> Thought you might say that. John McGuinness or Peter Hickman? It's got to be John, sorry, Peter. <laughs> Milky bars or Mars bars? Milky bars, of course. <laughs> Gra Grandstand to Glen Helen or Ramsey to the bungalow? Oh, Grandstand to Glen Helen. Oh, surprises me. Right, Illy Quayle, your son. <laughs> yeah. British champion or senior teacher? <laughs> <laughs> um, he started racing, by the way. Yeah. He's 18 now, he dropped the bomb. Obviously. Nate, no descriptions. <laughs> Would you prefer him British Championship, British Champion, or winning the senior at the TT? No, oh, that's unfair. <laughs> that's unfair. <laughs> um, oh. uh, senior TT, I suppose. Senior, yeah. Good lad. That, I know. Yeah, I knew yeah, that was yeah, the yeah. answer. You don't want to say it. <laughs> right. Uh, Greber Bridge or Ballaspur? Bell Spur. He's crashed at both. <laughs> I have. <laughs> right. <laughs> Last one. A big night out with Paul Phillips or a romantic <laughs> evening with Lydia, the wife? Oh, big night out. Big night out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lyd. <laughs> Sorry, Lyd. Hey, thanks, buddy. Milky, it's been an absolute Thank you, pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Um, you. No doubt we're going to be having another podcast because, again... Yeah, so I waffled on about all no, that. Hey, listen, we, yeah, I, I, yeah. Get, I don't think we've scratched the surface yet, <laughs> no. so there's plenty more to come from Milky. And keep up the good work. Ah, no problem. Thank you ever so much. And thanks for everything that you boys do. And, you know, everybody, you know, it's, again, it's a big team effort. And ultimately, you know, we're all going for the same goal of trying to make the event a success. And, you know, thanks for everything that you do. You know, it's, it's amazing. Thank it's you. A pleasure. You were right, Steve. Back at the top, we were going to struggle to shut him up. And uh, <laughs> he, he went on and on and on. But I've got to say this now. I wanted to say it during the podcast. I think Milky is the busiest man in motorcycling. Not you. Get out. He, I'm telling you. He didn't mention anything. He's a bus driver as well. He didn't even mention that, did <laughs> he? didn't he? even mention it. <laughs> <laughs> but the same, the same with him as, as with, with the rest of the girls we've had on recently. You could talk for hours to him. I know, I know. But it's just, for me, it just proves one thing. When I come to the Isle of Man, I'm never getting on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> he is by far the most passionate person, though. Incredibly, incredible, and he is a, like he's such a good advert for the TT. I know and, you and are. Everything is for the TT races. Everything, and that yeah, that was you could definitely tell in the interview that he does it because he wants to see the TT succeed. Yeah, fair play. That was the Milky Quail episode of the TT podcast, and our very last episode of 2022. We're taking a very short break over Christmas and New Year and we'll be back almost a year to the day since our first episode on Friday the 6th of January 2023, when normal service will be resumed with our next guest, Chief Medical Officer at the TT, Dr Gareth Davies. One of the key things is around that understanding very quickly, very rapidly, what the key issues are on scene and, and trying to turn the chaos into to something that's ordered when everyone else is, is sort of panicking. And, and one of the core skills of the, the team we have here at the, the TT and, and in many of the helicopters around the country is what we call flash teams, where we can bring people together to, to help save someone's life who may never have known each other. That might be a copper, it might be a member of the public, it might be a fireman, but somehow you have to gel into a team that is really efficient and organised and composed to stop someone dying. Make sure you subscribe and have that notification bell turned on so you know as soon as that episode is available. And as ever, Steve would love you to leave a five-star rating and a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. From myself, the man, the myth, the legend that is Steve Plater, and everybody behind the scenes at TT Podcast, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2023.